bad news for people who eat things like bread and uh, wheat and corn. Uh, climate change uh, is going to fuck that up. Now, there was a recent report from the researchers of the uni- from the University of Arizona that looked at species of grass, right? Now, you might think, oh, grass, that's what I mow, right? Or uh, some people might think, hey, it's grass, it's what I smoke. No, no, there are different types of grasses, and uh, uh, crops like rice, corn, and wheat are considered grasses. These are, these are things that we made into actual food staples that, take up, uh, that make up to about half of our calories worldwide. These grasses are going to be impacted by climate change. Now, they looked at these grasses, right? They compared their ability to adapt and successfully and grow in different changing environments with the forecasted climate conditions for 2070, which I think are kind of conservative. Now, if climate change uh, goes this way, these grasses will have a very, very hard time adapting to the new climate. The researchers found that in most instances, the grasses were not able to adapt to a different environment as quickly as the pace of climate change. And in some instances, the climate change outpaced the, the, the grass's adaption 20,000-fold. Disaster. John Wines, co-author of the study and professor of ecology and evolutionary biology at the University of, of Arizona, told the BBC that, quote, the findings are similar across all groups. Uh, you know, uh, grasses, like the stuff that we use to cultivate our food, cultivated crops versus wild crops, and they found no difference. The findings are similar across all the groups, so they could be applied to wild species as well to the cultivated ones. There's no way that cultivated species are exempt from our findings. So this is going to be a disaster. We continue on this path of climate change, And we're going to lose our ability to grow half of the world's calories. I'm not saying that they're all going to die. They'll be moved to different places. But a lot of our current farmland is not going to be usable within the next century. And so, I mean, this has got me concerned. As it should. I mean, mean, we already pay more for like a lot of different types of produce uh, than a lot of other countries. And part of that is because of our food culture here in the United States. Um, and one thing that I've noticed in my life is that your local farm is such an important entity and such a, uh, an enriching part of one's life and anything that endangers that always kind of, uh, always kind of turns my head. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is, this is something that's, uh, going to have a huge huge impact and yet what we continue to do is we continue to say drill baby drill let's put more carbon into the atmosphere yeah. instead of less i mean we have a presidential candidate we have, well we have two presidential candidates that aren't fantastic in the climate we have one that's okay steady as we go a little bit of solar panels here and there and then we have one that thinks that it's a hoax created by the chinese right i mean and that's the thing. I mean, you always, when you hear numbers like 2070, or, or excuse me, years like 2070, you think, oh, well, we're going to, there's surely things are going to change. But and, and sometimes you wonder, I don't know. We do have two pro-fracking candidates for president. Uh, you know, the only anti-fracking candidate is Jill Stein, who has no chance at winning. We, uh, there is a good chance we are going to see self-driving cars become the norm before electric there's a good chance that will happen because the oil and gas lobby is that strong and and because we we just we're we're putting more into that at the moment um and that is really cause for concern yeah that's look money in politics obviously we rail on this all the time in our respective you know shows our respective channels and this is a major part of why we can't do anything on climate change. I mean, when we have to, you know, when, when we can't even have a, any sort of impact on our politicians, you know, when we say, hey, climate change, kind of important, we should do something about it. Even the majority of American people say we should actually have the government do something about climate change. The entrenched interests of money in politics 
dictates that, no, we can't do anything because that's going to hurt jobs. It's going to hurt their bottom lines. And so we're stuck. And right now we're, we're, the, we're the frog boiling in that pot of water, except that we're saying, we're boiling. We're boiling. Get us out of here. We need to do something. Yeah. And look, yeah, the only person absolutely. that actually has a good plan on doing anything about it. Well, first, Bernie Sanders had a great plan. Jill Stein also says that we should mobilize the climate like a uh, like a World War II style climate mobilization. And that's that's something that's very appealing to me as I'd like to continue eating and living on this planet. Mm -hmm. Gary Johnson, not so much of a plan. His plan is, yeah, let's not do anything because in about five billion years, the sun will swallow the earth. The tinfoil hat will protect us. It might rot our brains, but it'll keep us safe. Not from the sun swallowing the earth. <laughs> Terrible plan. So there's only one person that actually has the type of bold progressive plan that we need. Now, I'm not saying vote for Jill Stein. I'm not saying, you know, vote for anybody. I'm not saying vote against her. I say, you know, vote your conscience, right? Um, but I am saying policy-wise on climate change, Jill Stein is the clear progressive winner. She's the only one that gets the, the gravity of this situation. Hillary Clinton's going to do some regular, you know, solar panel investments, which are great. I like solar panels. You like solar panels. Um, and, you know, and other clean energy investments. But she's not going to get rid of fracking. And she's not going to do anything to really cut emissions from the United States, which were one of the biggest uh, emitters of emissions alongside of China and India. Now, on the mm -hmm. other side, you've got Donald Trump who says, eh, let's rip up these accords to the Paris Accords. And open up the oil. That's a quote. Yeah, I mean, he wants total deregulation. I mean, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, and the TPP has some very disturbing uh, environmental hazards in it. Um, and that's why, you know, you, you hope that Hillary, and, and I know Donald Trump is not in favor of the TPP, uh, but, you know, Hillary Clinton has been going back and forth right now. She's kind of leaning towards no, but... You know, I, I feel like she's more likely to flip on that. But then again, I mean, Donald Trump would be for total uh, deregulation. So environmentally, yeah, you do not have good choices. The difference is, it, the way I see it, is Hillary Clinton, you know, I, I will say this in her favor about the debate. You can tell a lot by what type of a leader a person will be by the manner in which they handle a bully. And even though I'm not a Clinton fan, and I never will be, I'm likely not going to vote for her because I live in California um, and, you know, would rather kind of see the Greens get some numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do, I ha did come off feeling a little better that even though I strongly disagree with her on a lot, I have a little bit more confidence that she would surround herself with some decent people and listen to the voice of the electorate and at least approach cases uh, strategically and reasonably. You know, that's what Obama did. And there's a lot of the Obama administration I liked, a lot that I don't like. Um, but, you know, to say that it was no different than the Bush years, I, I think it's just delusional. So, so, I mean, in that regard, even though, yes, we do have pro two pro-fracking candidates, I, I think when it comes to environmental issues, head and shoulders, Hillary Clinton would be better I than Donald Trump. Yeah, no, there's there's no question about that. If you think that Donald Trump's going to do anything about the environment, no, absolutely not. He's not going to, like, he's going to make it worse. This is 10 steps backwards. And that's the truth of it. And look, if you guys want to get mad at me watching at home for, you know, actually saying that, Yes, this is the truth. This is this is their policies laid out compared to each other on factual basis. Hillary Clinton has a better environmental policy. Not saying that it's fantastic, not saying that it's great, but it's better. If saying that somehow makes you a sellout or a shill or 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 not progressive, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Well, and, you know, to be fair, too, though, I, I mean, I will say, like, like, I find it incredibly disturbing that any Democrat would be for pro fracking. I mean, it, no, it I bothers agree. me immensely. Yeah, it bothers um, me as but well. But sadly, that's. I, I mean, I think that 
the Bernie movement has really shined a light on something that we already knew, which is that the, the Democrats have left progressives behind. We have an option of a fringe right party and a center right party. And that does not reflect the people that live here. Yeah, this not is, at all. Th and that's why this this election is look, Hillary Clinton is a is a shit sandwich, right? And it sucks, but somebody's got to take a bite out of that sandwich. Like somebody has to. And uh, you know, I, I don't want to. I don't blame you for for not wanting to. But shit sandwich versus bad of boiling a uh, bad of boiling acid which is Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I, Hillary Clinton is probably the worst Democratic nominee in my oh, life. No, 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 not probably. She is. Donald She's Trump, the worst. She is. Donald Trump is maybe the worst nominee in the history of the presidency. So, man, you know, it, it sucks that those are the choices, but... Mm -hmm. And look, if we want to actually at least make some sort of small progress towards saving our food supply, half of our calories, well... We have our choice. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent non-corporate media, go to our Patreon page and become a patron. Patreon.com slash TYTNation.